Hey guys, welcome to the Get the Phone Ringing Show, where small businesses come to copy success in 45 plus categories weekly. I'm your host, Jeff Wilson. Very nice to meet you. Today's show is going to take you from rah rah, I have a website, to actually having a website that gets people to take action, whatever action you want them to take. And our expert, Kyle McCall, has been designing websites since he was 14. He claims it was because of curiosity. I claim it was because he didn't have cool enough hobbies. At any rate, it's to our benefit because since then, Kyle has helped several hundred businesses. He's actually helped three businesses launch up to the $15 million range and several more up to the $1 million range. Kyle's specialty, getting people to do what you want them to do when they get to your website. Now, Kyle takes us through a ton of examples today, shows us a lot of cool visuals, befores and afters, all that kind of stuff. So it's uh, really fun to see how a website can actually start converting for you. And for those of you who think my website is just fine, I don't think you'll feel that way after you watch this show. Now eh, you can prove me wrong maybe. So without further ado, let's watch the show now. Hey guys, welcome to the Get the Phone Ringing show. I'm Jeff Wilson and with me today I have Kyle McCall. Hey Kyle, how you doing and where are you calling in from? Good. Thanks for having me, Jeff. I'm uh, calling in from Phoenix, Arizona. From Phoenix, Arizona. And as we can clearly see, Kyle is in the Playboy Mansion that must be in Arizona now because he's got the nice uh, staircase back there. We're looking for some uh, some scantily clad bathing suits to run behind him uh, in his, his lavish abode. Uh, hey, Kyle, you're going to take us through some web conversion stuff today. So uh, go ahead and uh, just take us through it. Okay. Basically, what I want to talk to you guys about today is how you can get a return on your investment after you have a website already designed and how you can also implement landing pages in addition to your website to get an even higher return on investment and engage with your customer base. Hey so, Kyle, so when as we get into this, some folks might not even know what a landing page is, so definitely okay. make sure when you're showing it to us, you're kind of calling out, hey, this is, this is a landing page and this is you know just website design. Sure, sure, all right. Well, a good example, I guess, of a landing page would be this one. This is the Cartoon Network. As you can see here, this guy is all over the board. While it might be aesthetically pleasing, you don't know where to look, where to click. You don't know what they want you to do. And they probably don't know what they want you to do either. Uh, <laughs> this is not a very good website for a small business. If you put all your information in front of the customer at once, they're not going to know what to read or how to contact you. So you end up with information overload. The consumer just gets lost. They don't have a call to action. It doesn't say pick up the phone, give us a call, come in and see us. You're not selling any particular product. Consumers will typically just fall off the site, never come back to you, and you have a lost opportunity for some ROI from your website. Yeah, this stresses me out just looking at it. Like it makes me want to crawl up in a ball and maybe suck my thumb for a little while <laughs> and, and, and just hope it goes away. Yeah, this is this is a bad example. So. An example of a landing page, for those of you that don't know, it's not a full website. It's a single page with one call to action that is clearly defined. In this example here, you can see the call to action is to watch the video and submit your name and an email address here and hit sign up now. This is excellent for small businesses to use because they can gather customer information and call them, email them, grow their subscriber base, whatever you really want to do. You can implement this same technique on products if you want to sell one product one product in particular, instead of putting a video over here, you can list a product or a service, a little bit of information, and a big buy now button. That way anybody that comes to that site can read about what, per, what one product you want to sell and how to buy it. And you can always put a link on the bottom of the site that says view more of our products. But the people that come to that site will probably be looking for your type of products. It was a, uh, a, a gym, a fitness membership. You can pitch why your gym is better than everybody else. You can sell your membership, and if somebody wants to learn more about how you got started, you could put an about button down here at the bottom, but it's not the core focus of why the consumer is there. They might just want to see the fitness machines, find out what your price is, and then decide whether or not they want to buy it. Yeah, and almost any small business from a landing page perspective could use something like this to just say, hey, come in for you know, a free month membership, a free trial, come in for, you know, click here for a 50% coupon. And one of the yeah. things that uh, I've noticed on this page too is that you've now gathered their information in this case, and now they're yeah. on your list, which you know a lot about and might touch on a little bit here today. 
Yeah, I'll actually go into a little bit more with this right now on the landing page side of things and show you a real example. Um, this year, obviously, taxes were due, and I wanted to find a CPA in the Phoenix area. So I went to Google Maps, I typed in CPA and my zip code, and these are kind of the results that came up. Now, I went through all these guys, and these are just map listings. A lot of these guys have general sites, like jacksonhewitt.com. That doesn't tell me who, in particular, I'm going to be working with. Now, since I'm a small business myself, I typically like to have one or two CPAs that I can sit down with and work with on my specific tax return. Yep. So here are two examples of CPA websites that I just clicked on from this Google Maps result. This is the first one. <laughs> now, it's in Spanish, obviously I'm in Arizona, but aside from the language, it's not a very good website. I see the phone number, but it actually fades out, which I find very odd. Uh, <laughs> call us, call us, call us. Wait, 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 don't call us, don't call us, don't call us. Okay, 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 okay call, us. call us. No, 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 don't call us, don't call us. <laughs> the, uh, the menu is rather small up here, and the only thing that they have on their site are questions. They have five questions. They don't have anything about them. I don't know who I'm working with. They actually are using a stock photo that they haven't paid for. I mean, it just gets better and better. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, you can see the X crossed. <laughs> That's solid. Yeah. So the first thing I think, obviously, is I'm not going to work with this small business. They don't have a website. I'm going to look elsewhere. Yep. So I come back to the Google Maps result. I click here, and I've already loaded this page up over here. Now, this is a much better website. It's clean. It's focused. It gives me just enough information down here that I can read about what they do. They focus in small business accounting. They have tax saving advice and they offer additional business consulting services. If I want to get in touch with them, they have a non fading phone number right up here that I can clearly see and read. Hey, Kyle, uh, is that one of your biggest tips to have non fading phone numbers? Would you, is yeah. that like a top <laughs> yeah. three? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> have a non fading phone number. That's a huge plus. If you're going to do any type of an animation, just make it an animation that calls to your attention. Uh, I'll show you an example of that actually. Now here's an animation that you can incorporate into your website that isn't a fade out and isn't going to hurt your return on investment for any traffic. It's just a simple little animation that tells the person this is where you want to go next. You can click the continue button. So this is a good implementation. This is a bad implementation. Maybe that will be. Uh, maybe that could be your next ebook. Yeah. Fading like phone that. numbers when not to use them. <laughs> That's a very good point. That's a very good point. Um, now on to maximizing your return on investment when you buy traffic. Let, let's actually talk about traffic first because a lot of small business owners think that if you just put up a website, you're just going to get loads of traffic and unfortunately that's not true. If you go to Google and type in any keyword, you're going to find millions of results. So you typically end up having to pay for the first, around, first couple rounds of traffic to get your website on the map and to see traffic coming in, to get some business. And then eventually, in the course of 6 to 12 months, your website will start to get noticed by Google and Yahoo and those other companies. They typically have an algorithm that states any new website is irrelevant. You have to be around. You have to have some street cred, so to speak, yep. before they'll put you on the map. Okay. In the first 6 months to 12 months, you want traffic. You obviously don't want to sit around for a year with nobody coming to your store. So you buy traffic on the Internet. One of the most common things for small businesses to do is use pay-per-click traffic, otherwise known as PPC. Okay. And for anybody, and and, who... and that's if I that's pay as in pay money per yeah. click. <laughs> the reason I say that is because I've talked to folks uh, and not making fun of them, but people literally thought I was saying paper click, as uh, in yeah. as in a piece of paper click, and they're like, I don't understand how paper you can click on it. I don't understand how that helps me. And yeah. it took us like twenty minutes before they realized what I was talking about. So. PPC is pay per click, and traffic is the people that come to your site, for those that are the uninitiated. Okay. Great. great. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. A lot of times I throw these lingo, these yeah. terms, the lingo, and I don't realize that some of these people might not catch Yep, us. same for me. I do it all the yep. time. Okay. Uh, so in an average pay per click situation, you might have to pay Google or Yahoo up to 70 cents or even a dollar for every visitor that they'll send your way. Now, this is becoming more and more expensive as time goes on. Years ago, it used to be 30 to 50 cents, and just in the past four years, it's skyrocketed. It's because more and more people are bidding on these terms, and those search engines are growing more powerful by the day. And you know, so, Kyle, I have a, uh, I have a direct um, situation with that where 70 cents a click 
is even way low. Like that might be an average, right? But uh, yeah. like in the plumbing industry where we, we do a lot of pay for performance with uh, another business and uh, we've looked into pay per click and some of the keywords, keywords is a search term that people search for, right? For folks that don't know yeah. that. Some of those search terms or keywords were $10 plus per click oh, yeah. for a local business. And so the idea of convert and making your website very conversion friendly is obviously huge because you might pay literally several dollars for a click, meaning somebody just to come to your site. That's not even yeah. calling you or anything else. Yeah, exactly. I would not recommend, even with as nice of a site as this is, I would not recommend spending 70 cents to a dollar or more to send traffic to this website because your call to action isn't clear enough. Yep. You might customers will find my phone number. They, they might not. They might want a different piece of information. You know, this was what I was looking for. But if they have 100 visitors and only one or two are looking for it, you know, they spent $70 to $100 for just me. And that might not be a good return on the investment. Yep. So the biggest thing I want to touch on with this is when you are building a website, upgrading your website, or considering building an additional landing page, is to define your goals before you do anything. It'll, it'll help you in the development cycle because you'll be able to tell the web designer what you want them to accomplish. You know, make the continue button, the buy now button, the sign up button, the phone number, whatever your goal might be. That'll be forefront in the designer's mind when they start coding your website. And you'll see more and more people taking the action that you wanted to because you defined it up front. Which is not nearly as common sense <laughs> as, no. as a small business might think. They might think, I get a website and it's set up to convert. And that is just not the case. That's not true. Most people are thinking that people want to find all the information about their company, who the owners are. Um, they don't really want that information. Typically, they want to know how much is it going to cost me to join or buy your product or service, and what's in it for me. That's really all they want to know. They don't want to know about the nice building you have and how nice the drywall is or any of that other stuff that you care about. Yep. They don't want to know how profitable you are. They just want to know that you're going to give them a bang for the buck. So you really have to define the goal in the customer view. Why are they coming to you? Why should they pick you over your neighbor? It really it's an outside in perspective that you have to take when building these sites. Yep. Uh, and then after you define your goals, I've already touched on this, but design your landing page or your website to meet those goals. You know, make your phone number big, make your sign up button big, your web form. That needs to be right there, core focus. And the first design, unfortunately, is not always gonna knock it out of the park. You really have to focus on optimizing and tweaking your design to beat your goals. If you really want to see a higher return on investment, you have to tweak. Nothing is, I mean, there are home runs. Sometimes you build a site and it just flies. You might have a conversion rate that everybody that comes to your site, you have a 40% conversion rate. What that means is that 40% of the consumers that come to your site end up buying your product or service. That's fantastic. But what if you can get that at 45% or 50%? You could have a much bigger year. 10% doesn't sound like much, but over the course of a year, that's a lot of money. So you want to optimize your website. And a great tool that I am not affiliated with in any way <laughs> to do I'm, I'm serious. I'm just a big fan of it. It's called Optimizely. Optimizely.com. Now, what this tool does, I think it's like $50 or $70 a month. It allows you to make your site a drag-and-drop interface that you can move content around. So, for example, I don't think they have a live example on here. Let's see, features, see if they have it. No, they won't. So I'll just show you. For example, this site right here with the Optimizely tool, anybody without coding experience would be, would be able to take this slideshow and click and drag it down and then move this content up. And you might not think that's a big deal, but suddenly you have a phone number, your information up here, and images down here you might run some traffic to it and see you get a 1% to 2% bump in conversion rates. You might find you get a 10% drop in conversion rates. But then you know that this is the best layout for my website. Simple, small updates and tweaks that anybody can do without having coding experience by open tools like this for $50 to $70 a month. Fantastic tools. And, and uh, a note on conversion. Uh, Kyle had talked about uh, conversion being uh, you know, them buying your product or service. 
but you know, other forms of conversion are just really whatever action you want them to take, which, which a lot of the things, Kyle, you've done, the conversion, the action was just literally for people to sign up with an email. And, and for us with um, the plumber pay for performance things that we've done, uh, the, the, the conversion is to get them to make a phone call. Right. Yeah. It's it's literally not to you know, obviously you eventually want them to buy, but they're not going to buy over the phone for that. Mm -hmm. And we don't we don't want an email in, in that case. We'd rather have them pick up the phone because usually people are hot. Each business yeah. has different conversion goals, which is what you're talking about. Like you design your site based on what's the one goal I want. You sort of start there and then and, and design out. So and just so exactly. many people don't do that. Exactly. That's the big thing. Um, Let's see here. I'll show you one more example of a company, Stevia, the sweetener. Uh, they recently hired me to build them a landing page for a sweepstakes they're doing. And in their case, they call it a sweet steak since they're a sweetening nice. uh, product. And they came to me and they said, Kyle, we want a landing page that will announce the prize that we're giving away. They're giving away almost $4,000 worth of products, a bike, a grill, KitchenAid blenders, gift cards, all sorts of stuff that you can see down here. But Aside from that, they wanted their customers' contact information. They wanted to have names, addresses, cities, zips, emails. They wanted that information because they could eventually use it to target market their core audience. So for them, this is their conversion, like yep. you were saying. This is what they want out of their website. And so I built the website with this above the fold, meaning you're, you don't have to scroll to see it. You have a big arrow pointing to it. And the sign up button is one of the first things you see after you look at this bike and maybe a couple of like things that are up here, giant register now text. Your eye will see this in the top five things you see on this page. And I want to touch on real quick above the fold because that's a conversation I've had with a lot of small businesses too. Yeah. The above the fold originally that con that that naming came from the newspaper industry. And when you get a newspaper and it would fold over, uh, anything above the fold was what you would read and see in ads and things like that. If your ad was below that, then it would cost less. Well, as Kyle just touched on, above the fold in the in the internet and on websites means uh, on most you know because there's all sorts of different size screens and browsers and things like that. But on most screens are your is your main call to action that main conversion point is it above where somebody would have to scroll down. So say somebody had a really tiny screen. Kyle would design this so that sign up now is still above where they would need to scroll down. And that's what above the fold means um, from, a, from a business owner standpoint. And, mm -hmm. and so many businesses just totally miss that too. They just this, like this, the call to action, they don't get around to it till the bottom of the screen or something. Exactly. Now this size right here, I've done this so many times I have a rough idea. This size right here is what you'd see on those old monitors, you know, the projection yep. monitors, two feet deep. This is what those people would see on that monitor. So as you can tell, this registration form is still above the fold. The prizes are still above the fold. The pitch is still above the fold. If somebody scrolls down, the only thing they read about are the you know terms that this bike is worth $2,200. The grill is worth $350. So the most important stuff is above the fold for the oldest of monitors and computers. And then you know a larger screen like I'm using here on a 17-inch monitor it's right all it's all right there for me too so yep. it's a universal um, design i guess yeah say. that's good to show that because then people can get a sense for not just designing for what they see on their on their screen yeah. yep yeah there's a there's a big big variety of browsers and monitors and everything you have to take that into consideration and actually that leads me into the next point of doing web development now a lot of small business owners might have a small budget and they might not think that they can hire a graphic designer or web designer. So a lot of them embark on doing it yourself. Now, web development, as we've already talked about, it's a lot more than just getting a site online. You have to take into consideration you know, above and below the fold, the goals and objectives that you have, the aesthetics of the site, and the graphic design elements. Does your site come across as professional, like this one, or does it come across as this? <laughs> a lot of standard out of the box HTML packages that allow you to design sites for five or ten dollars a month end up looking like this. Right. And, it, and you spend hours trying to make it look better. It just never does. That's right. This this probably did take somebody hours to get to this yeah. point. Yeah. The layout and everything is probably all they focused on. I mean they spent hours probably looking for that photo. They're so, like, yes, nailed it. That's it. <laughs> Hand coming out of the paperwork. That's it. <laughs> 
So you might want to consider contacting a professional if you don't have an artistic touch. Um, because graphic design does take an artistic touch, believe it or not. It's like painting. Not everybody can paint well. Some can, and if you can, do it yourself. If not, seek outside help maybe to make your business more professional. Yep. And then cross-browser compatibility. Now, everybody has their own personal choice. I personally, I use Safari and Firefox on a Mac, and that's because I'm a developer. Now, Jeff, you're on a PC. Um, I use Chrome. Yeah, I know tons of people that are in Chrome and Internet Explorer. They use Firefox on Windows and Firefox on Mac. Totally different. So you have to imagine that even if it looks good, on, even if the website or landing page that you build yourself looks good on the screen you're looking at it on, have you tested it in Internet Explorer 6, 7, 8, and 9? Four totally different versions. Microsoft did it. I have no idea why. But they all interpret your website differently. And same with Safari and Firefox and Chrome. So you really need to take the time to download all of these web browsers and test it if you're going to do this development work yourself. Yep. And then the coding side of things kind of ties into the cross-browser compatibility. But if you're going to code it yourself, make sure you can code well. Dirty code is slow code, meaning if you can write basic HTML, your site might pop up. But if you have a bunch of uh, out-of-date tags or anything of that nature, your cross-browser compatibility, it's going to go down really quickly. It's not going to display properly. It's going to be slow loading. And that leads me to the five essential elements that I want to leave you guys with of what you should do if you're going to do this yourself and what to look at. So design, you want to minimize those distractions. Make sure your call to action is clear, your goal, your telephone number, your sign up form, your buy now button. Make sure your conversion point is forefront in your design and minimize the distractions that you might have. Because again, you don't want to end up looking like this. Nobody knows what to do on that website. The second is tweak. After you've designed it, play around with it. Make sure it loads on all those different browsers or computers that I was talking about. Pull it up on an iPhone, an iPad, an Android. Pull it up on your laptop, your desktop, whatever you can get your hands on. Make sure that it loads in under eight seconds. Typically, if somebody finds your ad or sees you on Google, clicks on your link, they will wait eight seconds for your website to show up before they close out. Now, I didn't make up that statistic, and I didn't do the research on that statistic. So it might be seven, it might be 10. But I typically found that more and more people agree that eight seconds is the time window you have to sell your customer and not just have them load up a blank white page. Hey, Kyle, along those lines, I uh, heard somebody give a training one time about they were split testing a, a landing page. And, uh, and they, I think they'd had a, a, it was a landing page or a webinar page. And yeah. they found that when they, they um, were able to maximize their upload times, or in this case, what do you call it, download or upload? The download. For download that. time. And yes. they actually saved it. They actually cut off a second. Yeah. And, they, and they said their, um, their drop-off rate was you know, like went down by 25%. Like literally, yeah. it, it loaded a <laughs> second faster. And it was already a fast loading. It was like probably already loaded at like eight seconds. And it started yeah. loading at seven or six seconds. And they said they literally – it won up like it, it was they couldn't believe how much it affected it now that's not going to be true all the time but it definitely was true for them so i, I yeah. i've definitely heard i don't know what the number is but i definitely that's usually the the benchmark yeah. right don't don't wait any longer than seven or eight seconds to have it up there exactly and and the big thing is i mean think about that on your iphone say you're on 3g right your 3g speed is slower than the cable internet at your house or what about you know grandparents or parents that are still on dial-up and don't have cable internet Everybody's connecting to the web in a different manner at different speeds. Some have 4G, 3G, cable, dial-up. So that eight-second rule really opens the door for everybody because somebody on dial-up is used to a slow load time. An eight-second website will typically load in about 10 to 12 seconds on dial-up, but it will load eight or less on cable. So you still right. have the opportunity to serve those clients. Yep. And some of the things that uh, go into the loading times – are the image resolution and the size of your images. Make sure you optimize them. If you have a if you have Adobe Photoshop, if you're one of those guys, use it. Do a save as for web. It'll reduce the size that your photo can be posted to the web with 
while maintaining the integrity and the look and feel of it. So it'll download faster, basically. Yep. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you might want to seek a professional photographer because they can help you out with that. Yeah. Um, JavaScript and clean code. JavaScript is something most people are not going to mess with, but use use these three things when you're talking to a professional designer. For the person doing it yourself, you're probably not going to understand it, but clean code, minimize JavaScript that is slow or has open loops, and optimize your image size and resolution. If you tell a designer to do those three things, they'll typically produce a website that loads quickly for you, and you won't have to think about anything, but that's the lingo that a designer needs to hear. Okay. Revolution, JavaScript, and clean code. The next, after you've invested your time and your resources, whether it be your time or your money in a, in a professional to do it for you, make sure you invest some money. Set aside $1,000 at least to do some pay-per-click to buy some traffic by displaying your banners on another website to do an email blast, to generate email newsletter subscribers, anything that somebody tells you to do, whether they're a professional or maybe a friend that had some success, gives you some advice on where to get some traffic for your website. Set aside money so that you can test your website and see how your customers coming to your website engage. You don't want to have all the, you don't want to spend a month of your time and a thousand dollars in building this awesome site that nobody ever sees. Make sure you set aside something to test it and get some money back. Oh yeah, it. yeah. That's a that's a big thing. A lot of people misinterpret that. I don't want to spend seventy cents on a click from Google, but I just spent three thousand dollars on a website. It's like, well, you're never going to get any of that money back if nobody sees your website. Yep. So invest in your success. The next thing, monitor the results. Google Analytics. I'll, I'll say that again. Google Analytics. It's a free service. Anybody can sign up for it. It's a simple piece of code. You add to your website, and then you can log in to Google Analytics at analytics.google.com, and you can browse how all the users are, or how the visitors on your website are interacting with your website. It'll show you where they drop off, where they click, how often they click. It's a really powerful tool, and it's absolutely free. So you should use it. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 pretty simple to use. Or Google has tons of videos to show you how to do it. So if you're you're kind of afraid of it, like most people would be, but man, once you <laughs> once you get the dashboards, you get to see you know what people do on your site, where they're going, and how long they spend on your site, you'll start to realize you need to work on conversion. You know, if yeah. you haven't if you haven't done the design yet, and you just put it on your existing site, and you realize, hey, people leave in four seconds. Yeah. Clearly, really you're not getting conversion. Yeah, it'll show you where everybody drops off too. You might have a great homepage that everybody clicks on. They visit another page, but then you might have one sour page on your site that a lot of people click out of your site. They don't want to read about your product anymore, and you know you just have to spend time fixing that one site or that one page yep. to get users to stay on your website. It's amazing what this tool can do for free. Um, highly recommend it, obviously. Yeah, no doubt. And the last advice, my fifth element to success online is do this every six months. I'm not saying redesign your website every six months. I'm saying make sure that you tweak your design, you define your goals and objectives, and you monitor how your changes are affecting the performance of your website. If you do this every six months, you will find that you have a much more successful year as a small business owner with your internet presence. The reason being, six months sounds like a short amount of time, but in the internet, it's amazing. It's the same, the internet is the same as the computers and hardware coming out. You know, every six months or every 12 months, it's outdated technology. The same goes for web design. You know, in the past four years, we've seen primitive websites now turn into dynamic e-commerce solutions that people can interact with and virtually build a house or go on virtual real estate tours. And there's so much more you can do with the internet now that computers are getting more powerful. So every six months, take a look at your website, see if your goal is still the same, and optimize and tweak your design excuse me, to make sure that you're achieving the goal that you want. And that really is the core five elements, I think, that uh, anybody, small business owners in particular, should look at when they're considering uh, you know, investing their time or resources into web development. Yeah, these are honestly no-brainers. It's just that people don't 
they don't recognize the importance. Hopefully they have after this training. Hey, for Kyle, Kyle, for folks that want to uh, are now panicked and realized uh, they're, they're in more trouble than they realize, or they now actually feel like, hey, they've got somebody that could maybe help them. Uh, yeah. We're going to obviously include your website and things like that in the show notes below and, and links to Optimizely so people can check that out, Google Analytics, things of that nature. Uh, can people reach out to you and, and work with you in some capacity? What do you recommend? Sure, yeah. Um, people can contact me on my website, supertechmedia.com. You can see it right here. Okay. It's all one word. And they can pick up the phone and call me anytime. Uh, 561-278-88. You can browse my full portfolio of work I've done on supertechmedia.com. You can read about my background, my bio. Uh, my team and I are ready to assist anybody that wants to have a professional manage their online web presence, whether they just want a landing page developed, they want some Google Analytics integrated to their website, they want to start collecting email addresses of their customers. We have packages that will suit just about any small business owner because that's our core market. We help small and medium-sized businesses Take it to that next level on the internet. And we don't like our customers to be spending money unless they're seeing a return on their investment. So the core thing about Supertech Media, when I started it, I wanted to make sure every customer that built a website through me earned back at least double what they invested with me. And pretty much all of my customers have experienced that. And that's why I'm still in business you know, four years later. I'm doing this full time and I absolutely love it because all my customers are making money on what they've invested money in. So that's a great feeling. Yeah, man, for sure. Well, hey, uh, thanks for being on the show and taking the time to uh, walk people through this. Uh, this is, um, to you, this is easy, but to other folks, this is a whole new world. Uh, and uh, everybody, thanks for watching today. If uh, you've gotten some, some great info out of this today and you feel like uh, this is going to help your business, uh, you know, just share this with, I don't know, maybe 500 other business owners today and just, uh, you know, just spend maybe the maybe the, the weekend just going through it and sharing it all over the place. Or if you feel like you're not up to that task, maybe just share it with a couple. We sure would appreciate it. And uh, if you want to get these shows sent right to your inbox, we have a um, multitude of opportunities for you to sign up on our site and we will send the new trainings as they come live right to your inbox. So you don't have to scour our site every day like I'm sure that you all would be. And uh, Kyle, thanks again for being on here. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We will see you on the next show. Take care. Bye.